have been converting users to Linux um, for a very long time. I think uh, I started using Linux way back in 2005 and I have been converting users from different platforms from Windows and Mac OS to Linux ever since. Actually, my wife used to be a Mac user, then I moved her to Ubuntu and now she's a full-time Chrome user. And I'm sure most of you have also kind of converted a lot of users to Linux. However, uh, in those early days, I noticed that uh, a lot of people who I moved to Linux had gone back to the previous platform which you were using earlier, and in some cases it was uh, Windows. Uh, I tried to find reasons and uh, I found a pattern that uh, they faced some problem with an application or cannot get the work done as they used to get in Windows, so they just went back to the platform that they knew the best. So I realized after thinking a lot that my approach was wrong. I was approaching these users from my point of view that Linux is better, open source is better, these applications are better than the application that uh, you are using. And I was wrong. So what I did was I changed my approach and um, I adopted a new kind of strategy towards such users. And that strategy was actually validated when a few weeks ago I talked to Italo Vignalo. He's from, uh, he's one of the co-founders of the Document Foundation that manages LibreOffice because they adopt the same strategy when they convert uh, enterprise users from Windows platform or Microsoft platform to LibreOffice. And this approach is about migrating users to the new platform instead of converting them. So how does that work? It, it's actually a lot of work. So what I started doing back then was that I will sit with user and try to understand uh, the kind of work they do, try to understand what they do with that particular application. I don't focus too much on the application, but I focus too much on what they do with their application. And once I kind of, it, it's, it's, as I said, it's a serious work, you know, where you have to kind of list out all the things that they do on their computer and uh, what applications they use, how they use it. And once you have that kind of list, then I go out and find open source alternatives to those applications. One thing that I make sure is that these applications are cross-platform, which means that they will run on Linux as well as their existing platform, which could be Windows or Mac OS. And then what I do is that I install these applications on their existing uh, system. I don't uh, wipe their operating system and install Linux on it, no. What I do is I install those open source applications on their current operating system and then I help them in moving their workloads to these new applications. So I will move them from Internet Explorer or Edge to Chrome or Firefox. I'll move their bookmarks, I'll move their passwords, everything, I'll, and the way they were using it to these new applications. If they're using Microsoft Office, then I'll try to move their workloads to LibreOffice and also teach them how they can continue to save their for files in docx or doc formats and actually i would recommend them to uh, use docx and doc so that there is no compatibility issues if they get a file in a different format or if they send a file in a different format that cannot be opened somewhere else same thing i do with all the other applications that they use some of the applications that i recommend are like mostly libreoffice and then vlcs for uh, movies and videos Firefox or Chrome is for browser. Uh, I install uh, GIMP, Krita. For music, I prefer Clementine. But what you have to do is make sure that these applications do run on their platform. At the same time, what I do is that I do not remove their older application that they were using. I keep those applications installed on their system as a backup. So in case they are stuck with some work, they can still get the work done. And then I give them like at least a few days or at least a week or two so that they get used to these applications. One thing that I focus a lot on is not that uh, uh, because these are open source applications, they're better. 
I focus on understanding their workload and how they can get the same work done in a slightly different manner with these applications. So the focus is all in all on them and their work, less on Linux or open source or the new application they are going to use. So that first of all, they have the confidence that yes, they can do the same work in a slightly different manner with this application. And that they also have that older application as a backup so they are not left high and dry if something doesn't work in the middle of the night and they have to submit a project. And then I get, I mean, I'm always available to help them if they have any question. And then I go back after a few weeks and see, you know, if they're comfortable. Now, what has happened is that after all this time, they have totally moved from their older applications to these new applications. And they are, have kind of, you know, we, we know now we are the, the, the creature of habit. So now they are kind of, uh, they have gotten used to these new applications. You know, it, it has become their kind of habit or they are addicted to these applications because now they are using these applications instead of the previous ones. Uh, so now what happens is that if, if, I change the underneath OS on which these applications are running, they may not even notice because none of us actually use operating system. We use applications. Operating system is there just to run those applications. We use tools and applications that we need to get the work done. So if they have this whole set of applications that they're used to, they really don't care where those applications are running as long as they can use those applications to get the work done. So then what I do is that I wipe windows from their system and I use Linux on it and install all those applications and move their, you know, workload and workflow and everything to these applications running on Linux. So now what they have found is that they are still doing the same work in the same manner that they have been doing earlier because they have already been using these applications for at least a month now. So there is no sudden change. Yes, there is slightly change. I mean, slight changes in the way Win Linux uh, UI works depending on the desktop environment or the distribution that you have installed on it. Uh, I would suggest Linux Mint is a great, you know, distribution, or you know, you can try Ubuntu when the the GNOME version is out with the release of 17.10, or you can use any other distribution. But I would suggest uh, a distribution which is easy to use and in this case it could be elementary OS or I would suggest Linux Mint is a great distribution there. Uh, despite being an open source user I think for these cases uh, Linux Mint would be a great choice. So once you have like uh, they, they see Linux Mint and they see that okay it's slightly different but they are already used to it because when they moved their workload from the previous uh, application that they were running on Windows to this new open source application, they have this confidence that yes, the UI is different. It's a slightly different way of doing things, but they can still do their work in the same way. So they have that confidence there. So when they move to Linux, they won't be freaking out. They won't panic that, oh my God, where have all those options gone? No, they are mentally prepared for it. And then they will continue to use Linux without even knowing that, you know, the underneath OS has changed to a great degree. Okay, it's not foolproof. Things can still go wrong. Uh, there is one thing that I always worry about is there are some corner cases where you re rely on that one application that you use like either once a year or like once in a while, you know, like once a month or once every three months. And that application is available only on that platform. I mean, I keep Mac OS or Windows just for those applications, though I run Linux on my main system, but I do keep this uh, platform because there are some applications that are not available on Linux, but not everybody can afford, you know, different platforms just the way I can. So there are always these corner cases where they may, you know, need those applications. And since those applications are not available on Linux, the chances are that they might want to go back to Windows. And in those cases, I would heavily recommend moving them back to Windows. But here is the tricky part, or actually the real part. The real part is that even if they move back to Windows, they will bring all these applications with them. They have already used these applications on Windows. So they will continue to use all these open source applications plus that one application that was not available on Linux. 
So even if they went back to Windows, they are still open source users. I mean, there are different components, you know, the application and platform. So you have lost, you have not lost the whole war as I used to lose in the beginning where the people will just go back to Windows and all those, uh, you know, Microsoft or proprietary applications. Here, uh, you may have lost one battle, which is the battle of operating system, but you have won the war because you have moved those users to open source world. You have won a lot of battles where they are still using those open source applications like Firefox, VLC, LibreOffice, uh, Game, Krita, name it, whatever you kind of, you know, introduce them to, they are still using those applications because now they are used to them. And the chances are that over time they may realize that, okay, they use that one application once in a while. So they may ask you, hey, can you dual boot with Windows so, you know, I can continue to use Linux for the rest of my year. But once when I need it, I can just switch back to Windows for that one application and go back to Linux. So there are more chances of success here when you migrate users using this approach versus like, you know, nuking their old system and installing a brand new system. So that has been my approach for a very long time and it has worked. I mean, none of my users have gone back to the older platform. Some of them dual boot for, as I said, you know, for that one application, but none have gone back to Windows because the whole platform failed. And uh, another thing is that, you know, even if something doesn't work, they now don't blame the entire platform because rest of the things are working. Rest of the application that they, they use are still working. So they don't say that Linux sucks or Linux is bad. They just know, okay, we can uh, move back and forth. So that has been my approach. If you have adopted the same approach towards moving Linux users to Linux or to migrating in migrating users to Linux, what has been your approach? Uh, share in the comments below and also let me know what do you think about this approach that I have adopted and if you like my content Please don't forget to click on the subscribe button so that you can continue to see my videos on a regular basis Thanks for watching. See you next time